So these are the doors that we bought for our basement barn door project. I had a lot of issues with these doors. I can't really recommend them, but when I bought them, I thought they were solid wood, and it turns out that they are not. After I cut them down because I had low ceilings, I found out that they were in fact particle board on the inside, which really disappointed me. But after that, I went ahead and filled all the cracks and voids and knots with this wood filler that's suitable for paint. Here we go, I've got it stood up. I've got a paint stick screwed to the top so it'll stay off the wall. And then I use these door spacers on the bottom of the doors to keep them up off the floor. So this is the little paint booth I had set up in my basement. I put plastic up everywhere. And this is how I'm going to flip the doors around after I paint one side. So I use two taper punches to pull it out away from the door. I just keep tension on them. And then I just pivot the door around all the way around until I get it flipped over. And it actually worked pretty good as long as you don't touch anything while you're moving it. The next step is to tack the doors. So use a tack cloth to get all the dust off so that way you don't have any debris on the f in the finish when you paint. I did a couple test sprays to make sure the spray gun was working correctly. And I went ahead and primed the doors. So I use Kills 3 primer, interior and exterior. It's got the highest hide. So it'll hide all of these knots and disfigurements in the wood that I don't want to see. I want them to look like a, a nice smooth door. So I went with Kills 3 and it, it worked pretty good. So after I sprayed the first coat of primer, I noticed that I had a lot of bubbling. And this is all from the veneer that's poorly adhered to the subsurface. So all that particle board that's underneath is just a thin layer of glue and then this veneer that's on top. And that primer, and the, I don't know if it was the water or whatever solvent is in, the, is in the primer, but it made all these little pockets and bubbles. To try and fix some of those bubbles, I got a syringe and I filled that with glue. And I poked some of the holes and inject a glue in there to try and fix them and some of it worked, some of it didn't. After I primed, I saw a lot of other areas that I needed to fill so I went ahead and filled those just on the front side of the door where, you, where we're going to see them. Okay, so I'm getting ready to spray my color. This is the back side of one of the doors. I had a lot of problems with these doors. These are junk doors. You can see the discoloration here. This is one piece of veneer so it's either the glue or just the color of that piece of wood. Um, I'm not going to re-prime this because this is the back side of the door. I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, I did do two coats of primer on the front side to try and hide this sort of thing. So if you, if you encounter something like this, you need to prime it again. Preferably with a high build primer or something that's going to cover stains and stuff like that. Like I said, this one I'm not going to worry about. So we're going to go ahead and paint it and see what it looks like. Okay, so one tip, if you're painting with multiple cans of paint, sometimes it's a good idea to go ahead and mix them up and then combine them all in a separate bucket that's clean. This is going to ensure a consistent color all the way throughout. So if one can got mixed a little bit different, you won't be able to tell once you mix them all together. And if you don't have a kitchen spatula for squeegeeing out buckets and paint cans and stuff, I highly recommend you get a cheap one. You're going to save a lot of paint. So if you're spraying, it's a good idea to put a block underneath your paint can to help keep all the paint to one side so you don't suck any air into the, into the pump while you're spraying. 